Our story opens today in the little kingdom of Ubetcha. Ubetcha is a picturesque country with small villages, tiny houses, and an incy wincy royal palace. Matter of fact, there's only one great big thing in all of Ubetcha, the national debt. So in the throne room of His Majesty, King Pippin the Green, we will now have the treasurer's report. Quite simply, Your Majesty, our fiscal resources and reserves have proved inadequate for the necessary funding of minimal expenditure. What do you say? What do you say? He says we're broke. Do you think we're broke? No, I think we're shattered. We are as poor as church mice. Don't be silly, Framley. For the last three years, the church mice have been sending us foreign aid. Well, what do we intend to do about it? Raise the taxes, of course. They're too high already, Majesty. Nonsense! A man who makes 100 pazuzas a day is already taxed 105 pazuzas. Hmm. How does he pay it? He borrows it. From where? From the royal treasury. Hmm. This calls for drastic measures. Let's go to war with Lower Palomino. Uh, sire, uh, may I suggest making war on a far richer target? What's that? Uh, this is the American pocketbook. Why not make some rich American a citizen of you betcha, make him a knight, give him a castle, invite him over, and when he gets here with all his gold and goodwill, we soak him. <laughs> After which, of course, we all yell, Yankee, go home! Oh, that's sneaky. That's mean. That's marvelous. You think it'll work? Hasn't failed yet. We'll do it. Who do we pick? It doesn't matter. All Americans are rich. You're filthy with the stuff, actually. And so Pippin the Green picked up a dart and tossed it in the map of the United States. It hit precisely on a little spot called Foggy Bog, Wisconsin. Almost missed the map entirely. And so a short time later, a royal courier arrived in Foggy Bog, traveling in a special compartment. All right, you bum. Come on up out of from down in under there. Officer, can you tell me who is the leading citizen of Foggy Bog? There ain't any leading citizen. They all lag badly. Tut, tut, sir. Don't malign our little community. Yes, Foggy Bog has one leading citizen. World traveler, connoisseur, beau vivant, courtly, gallant, and champion hog caller. Who is it? I can dissemble no more, sir. It is I, Waldo Wigglesworth. The Waldo Wigglesworth. Oh, then you're just the one I'm looking for. This letter is for you. It doesn't have my name on it. Oh, just a minute. <laughs> there, now. Mm, a special delivery letter from the kingdom of Ubetcha. Wait till I show this to the fellas. And Waldo took the royal courier to his truck. This is where you live? Uh, just temporarily. My townhouse is having a new gold roof put on it. Oh. Hi, Uncle Waldo. Hey, what you got there, Waldo? My nephew, Hopper D. Hooper, and my personal secretary, Phil Pot Bear. Hey, Phil Moore Bear. And I'm your what? Uh, I just got the special delivery letter. What's in it? Hey, maybe you've been drafted. With flat feet like this? Uh, yeah. You want to sue your arches for non-support. No, this is a letter from you betcha. I didn't know I had any friends who could write me from you betcha. I didn't know you had any friends who could write. I didn't know you had any friends. I pass. Why don't you open the letter, Uncle Waldo? You think we've built up enough suspense? Yeah, I'm full of goosebumps. I'm moderately a god myself. Okay, here goes. Oh, great snake. What does it say? Uh, yeah, you're putting us off. Now I'm inherited a castle. I'm a knight. Okay, now you're putting us on. Honest Injun guide, fellas. Looky here. Whee! Yes, the wily Waldo had fallen for the bait. Hook, line, and stinker. That sinker. Oh. In a trice, our friends had packed up their things and headed their truck toward the blue horizon and Waldo's own personal castle. Oh, if he but knew what awaits him, if he but knew the terror that hangs over those crumbling walls, if he but knew the danger... Then why don't you tell him? What, and give away the plot? <laughs> no. We'll have to wait till next time when we see the part-time here or night for a day. Well, last time, as you remember, the poverty-stricken kingdom of Ubetcha had decided to import a rich American to get their country out of heart. Through a mischance, they picked on Waldo Wigglesworth for their victim. I've heard of the ugly American, but this is ridiculous. In the royal palace of Ubetcha, all was in readiness. Got the safe open? Yes, sire. Money bags at the ready? All correct. Hmm. 
Let's inspect the troops. Present arms. Sound off. Gimme, 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 please. Take that man's name. Well, I guess we're all ready. And at that moment, Waldo's battered snake oil truck rumbled into the courtyard. That's our rich American? Probably an eccentric millionaire, sire. They like to appear seedy, you know. Oh, I think this one's overdoing it a bit. After dinner that evening, Waldo was the subject of a touching ceremony. I dub thee Sir Waldo and confer upon thee this genuine 300-room castle. Hey, gee, that looks like the Camelot Hilton. Rise, Sir Waldo. Gee, King. And now, Sir Waldo, it's customary to make some fitting gift to your newly adopted country. Yes, it's an old Ubetian custom called Feed the Kitty. I didn't know we were going Dutch. Empty your pockets, gentlemen. And they did. They dropped into the treasure chest 14 cents, three pieces of bubble gum, a stringless yo-yo, and a wee try harder button. Boys, I think we hit a clinker. We've been out flim flam. We just got three more miles to feed. And that little one is all mouth. But, Majesty, wait till they get to the castle. Oh, yes. I'd forgotten. Well, I guess it's all right then. So next morning, bright and early. There it is, Sir Waldo. Dankmoor Castle. It sure doesn't look like the picture. No wonder, Uncle Waldo. Look at the date on that picture. 1347. Uh, the neighborhood has run down a bit, but it has everything a castle should have. It has a drawbridge. It had a drawbridge. It has 300 rooms, two of them actually heated. It has picture windows. That window's only a foot wide. It's a small picture. It has 200 acres around it full of poison ivy and trash dumps. And of course, it has a dragon. Well, goodbye and good luck. Goodbye. goodbye. Bye. 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 What was that last thing he said? Goodbye and good luck. No, just before that. Uh, he said the castle had a, a dragon. dragon. Well, so it did. And he was a beauty. Let's get out of here. Ah, uh, hold it there, my liege. You're the lord of the castle now. Yes, I was. I resign. No can't do, my liege. You gotta stay and carry out your nightly duties. Such as? Such as fighting the dragon. Who says? That's ridiculous. Hey, they can't make you do that. Any knight who doesn't fight the dragon shall be beheaded. And so shall all his friends. Yes. Yeah. Fight fiercely, Waldo. Doesn't anybody else do anything around here? I do. I'm the headsman. When do I have to fight the dragon? Round one starts at 3.15. What time is round two? I don't know. Nobody's ever gotten to round two. 3.15? That's just ten minutes from now. So in ten minutes, Waldo was buckled into a heavy suit of armor and given a huge sword. I can't even walk in this thing. There's a horse, a horse, my kingdom for a horse, like the man says. Sorry, my liege, we got no horse. So in lieu of a fiery steed, Waldo was mounted on a rickety bicycle and started on his way. No sooner had he started than he hit a bump and his visor fell over his face. Almost. Let me out of here. I can't see where I'm going. It may be bad that way, Waldo. And the helpless Waldo hurtled on to a certain doom and destruction against a merciless enemy. Oh, what will happen next? I'll be slaughtered, you numbskull. What else? Is Waldo right for the first and last time? We'll find out when we see Where's Waldo or A Night to Remember. Well, Waldo was delighted to inherit a castle in Ubetia, but he didn't much care for the things that went with it, like a courtyard full of crabgrass, a moat full of algae, and a backyard full of the biggest dragon you ever saw. What was worse, Waldo found out he had to fight the fearsome beast. How can we help him, Fillmore? Yeah, we could go back three episodes before all this started. Surprisingly enough, there were some people who seemed to enjoy the prospect of this fearful encounter. The serfs and peasants from the surrounding countryside. Hooray! Hooray! I've had him, Sir Waldo! Fifty pursuers says he don't last three rounds. The dragon breathed forth a jet of flame. Just as Waldo, through a stroke of luck, fell off his bicycle. You call this a stroke of luck? In a bound, the dragon was on him. Raising Waldo high in the air, the dragon dashed him to the rocky ground. 
Ooh, I bet that's smart. Ooh. But wouldn't you know it, our hero Hoppity Hooper, fearless frog, leaped right in between the dragon and his prey. Stop that, you monster! What do you think you're doing? What do I think I'm doing? I, I think I'm dashing this night to the rocky ground. What do you think I'm doing? Hey, Fillmore, he talks! Hey, who ever heard of a talking dragon? Oh, boy. That's pretty funny, coming from a bear and a frog. That's my Uncle Walter you're dashing to the rocky ground. To you, he may be Uncle Waldo. To me, he's just another TV dinner. Hey, why do you keep dashing him to the rocky ground? I have to. I don't have a can opener. Nights are a lot of trouble to open, you know. But once you do, mmm, delicious. You eat nights? Day and. Doesn't matter. I'm always hungry. But why me? I'm tough and stringy. All right, you'll make a good appetizer. Then I'll have the main course. No! Cool. He's going to make it a double header. What a way to wind up Fillmore, an hors d'oeuvre for a creature that doesn't even exist. Yeah, I'm in the same fix, Waldo. But at least you're the entree. Why don't you eat something else, Dragon? What else is there? Tell me. Nothing grows around here but thistleweed, poison ivy, and crabgrass. You uh, don't like salads, huh? Oh, no. Give me the hot bang. <laughs> See? Hold it! Hold it! If we can get you some other food, will you let us go? Something tastier than fox tibbets and bear steak? Much tastier. Uh, I don't know, Albany. Bear steak is pretty tasty. Fillmore, please. Okay, you're on. Oh, he looks like the dragon is throwing the fight. Uh, right on a rocky ground, he's throwing it. You better not be pulling my scaly leg, booby. Frantically, our hero set to work. First, we need skin team dozen eggs. All right, girls, bear down. <laughs> All right, it's way past my dinner time, Hoppity. How about I should just have a little snack to tide me over, huh? <laughs> What's that? Just a little peasant under glass. <laughs> Inside joke. But you promised! Oh, all right, all right. Fortunately, the oven timer went off just then. And Hoppity produced an enormous, magnificent, upside-down chocolate pecan cheesecake a la Hooper. Hooray! Boom! He's getting soft. Mmm, mmm. Absolutely scrumptious. Sure beats canned Waldo, doesn't it? Mmm, mmm. Well. It looked as if our heroes were out of danger. Hey boy, that was hard work. But it was worth it. But just then, the dragon made a frightening remark. You know, it's a funny thing about upside-down chocolate pecan cheesecake a la Hooper. A half hour after you eat it, you're hungry again. And he casually reached out and picked up... Not hopping you! It's not a pal! Yay! That's more like it. We've got to save him. I don't know how to make upside-down chocolate pecan cheesecake a la Hooper. That's all right, fellas. I'll just have a little Hooper a la Hooper. Help! Don't miss our next meal er, uh, episode entitled The Inside Story or Alimentary, My Dear Hoppity. Well, last time it seemed that Hoppity was going to wind up as a dragon's dessert. We've got to save him, Fenstorff. Yeah. He's our buddy, our pal, the star of the show. Yeah. And besides, he owes me 38 cents. Hey, okay, Waldo. Uh, you hit the dragon high, and I'll hit him low. <laughs> what happened, Dave? We forgot about the middle. Now, wait, Funston. Fillmore. If we can't beat the dragon by brute strength... Dave, we got to beat him by brute brains. Right. A little salt and a little pepper. <laughs> oh, mother's mercy. Come back here. I've got it. Yeah, he's got it. I've got it. Hold it, dragon. Now, don't you want to be affluent and financially independent? Not particularly. What does it mean? Don't you want to be rich and famous and have your picture on all the magazine covers? A better home to dragons, maybe? Who can read? So fast, Uncle Wallow. He's putting mustard on me. Put it this way. How would you like to eat regularly for the rest of your life without all this running around? Eat regularly? Take every hour on the hour. 
You interest me strangely, stranger. How? Look at that. Yeah! Hooray! Go it, frog! Go it, dragon! Listen, I can't eat safes and peasants all the time. Did you ever try to clean one of them? No, no, they're not your menu. They're your public. My witch is what? You're the only dragon in the kingdom, right? Yeah, the others all died of the heartburn. <laughs> Then people come from miles around to watch a battle with Knights of the Realm, right? Certainly, but... Then why do it for freezies? Why not charge admission? You mean, time pro? Sure, you and Uncle Walla could stage a contest here every Saturday afternoon. The public would eat it up. So would I. I'll have you over for lunch, right? I said stage a fight. You can't devour your opponent. Why not? You wouldn't want to break up the act, would you? What? An old trooper like me? Never. It worked, Uncle Waldo. Always does, Hopper, dear. Everybody wants to be in show business. Well, it turned out just fine. The boys built a grandstand and Hopper sold tickets. Step right up. The bout starts in just a minute. Desmond Dragon versus the Black Knight. How oh, come I'm the Black Knight? Last week I was the White Knight. Hey, we ran out of white paint. Next week, you're gonna be the yellow knight. For that, I won't need a costume. Both contestants were crowd pleasers. A long foul fiend, be priest and pike shall pierce thee yet. Oof! Hey, do I die now? That's your cue. Oh, oh. I die, Horatio. The potent poignard, quite or crowd, my spirit. Dear, what in the world is that? He thinks he's Hamlet. Well, he's half right. So tell him, with the occurrence more and less which have solicited, the rest is silent. How do you like that? Upstaged by an amateur. <laughs> Gee, another happy ending. Uh, but what about the little kingdom of Eubetia? What about it? Well, remember this whole story started because they were so poor. Oh, well, we're very rich now. How come, King Pippin? Well, you see, people came from all over the kingdom to watch the dragon fights. Naturally, walking all that distance wore out their shoes. Something tells me I shouldn't have asked. So I set the whole country to work making shoes. I can see it coming, but I can't stop it. Soon other people began to buy our sturdy footwear and the kingdom of Eubetia waxed hale and prosperous. For today, everybody in the world has heard of... Eubetia Boots! And Eubetia Boots will be back again soon with another of the Adventures of Hoppity Hooper. I can't stand it! I can't stand it! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's time now for an important message from our sponsor. Watch!